You're the veteran now. I know, it's weird. Um, what did you, I mean, we've talked a lot about wanting uh, Milan to be more aggressive especially <coughs> early tonight from the three-point line. What did you see? Yeah, I liked his urgency right away. You could see he was getting his feet set. Uh, he was hunting. Like, from my vantage point, the more he can hunt, the better will be his aggressiveness. Um, there's a gravity to his game that you can just feel, and um, we're going to continue to encourage him to have that same level of aggressiveness and, and hunting opportunities. The catch and shoot, like obviously you want that to be a big part of his game, but probably not to be just a catch and shoot th shooter. The one he had going to the rim in the middle and then that turnaround, like how foundational can the catch and shoot be to unlock the other stuff? Yeah, that's that's exactly what it needs to be. He needs to hunt that catch and shoot and then, you know, people over close, he can attack, get to that floater, that turnaround jump shot. Those are great plays and great shots for him. He's really effective in that mid-range area. Um, so continue to do that and then us find a way to get him to the foul line as well so he can be extremely efficient like we, we know he can. Deshaun was effective underneath the basket. <coughs> the second good game for him. How does he fit into this team and what have you seen from him so far? Well, you see him, uh, he got established early, which is important. You know, you want to establish head game in the paint. He gives us somebody who's a formidable force in there that can finish uh, around the basket. And he's a tough cover one-on-one. -on -one. So early in the game, uh, and then out of the half to get him those baskets in the paint at the rim was really important for us. TJ, you changed up your starting five today. Uh, just why the lineup change and thoughts on what you saw from Kurt and Milan and their respective roles today? Yeah, I thought they both played great. I mean, honestly, we're just trying to get everybody to play to their strengths and, and best of their abilities. Um, I think at, at times when um, with that first lineup for Kurt, we like him playing more like a facilitator, playmaker, um, guy with the ball, keep an eye on the move. You see tonight he had five assists, no turnovers. I think when he comes right in, that, that mindset's natural for him. And then we need Milan hunting right away. So uh, worked well for, for us tonight. And uh, just opinion on the slow start offensively tonight. Yeah, we'd like to get off to a, a faster start. I think if we had better ball movement, um, and as the game went on and we were able to get out in transition, we did a better job playing for one another. It's something we're continuing to work on. We had some stretches and spurts, but it's got to be more of the standard all the time. Um, you know, we just got to continue to be on the practice court, work on it. Uh, it'll show for us when we come to the games. No matter who starts or comes off the bench between Milan and Curtis, you, both of them can probably go for 20 on a fairly regular basis. What's the value of having someone on the bench who can give you that kind of scoring production? Yeah, it's extremely important to have that spark. And Kurt was uh, electric for us tonight. Um, it really helps offensively to have somebody um, that can come in and do that. So with both of those guys, they're, they're guys that are, they're heavy minute guys for us. So we want to get them up around 30 minutes and um, they, both, they both did that. Great to have Kurt give us that spark off the bench. And just your philosophy, can you explain your idea between starting and I guess the idea of playing starters minutes? I know every coach kind of has a different viewpoint on it. Well, yeah, I mean, for us, I, I look at it like we, we pretty much have six starters. I mean, those four guards every turn, um, they're all starters to me. And so um, their minutes need to reflect that uh, more than, you know, who we, who we call out for the for the starting lineup. Hey, TJ. How we doing? Good. Good. Um, Milan had almost got his second steal. You said something to him. He said something like, I love your defense. I know you. The point of emphasis, one of many for him this year. How much do you love what he's doing, in it? and how has he improved in that area? <coughs> yeah, he's he's improved immensely. His activity level's great. Um, anticipation's better. Um, he's jump walling at the rim. He has more of a commitment on the glass, finishing possession. That's so important for us. So proud to see him make those plays. I was excited for him because he had he had some good energy out there defensively. And Keyshawn tonight, I think with the <coughs> assists. I mean, it, not all of his attacks to the rim were finished because they were highly contested, but just what does that say about him to you know, be able to dish it out that well tonight? Yeah, I mean, they have 21 assists, seven turnovers, and key specifically, uh, 10 to one, terrific. Obviously their defense, uh, they rotate heavily at the rim. So I think for us, just getting that rhythm, getting used to playing against that, but I love how Key played for his teammates and the shots that he got guys. Um, he really got us some great looks out there. Obviously, not an eight high seed last game. Two weeks more of a defensive presence rather than the offensive today. Kind of showed again. You know, you didn't really put up as many blocks or steals. What do you kind of see from Nate's performance today? Yeah, Nate that helps us really guard the perimeter. He gives a four guard lineup where um, 
he can guard multiple positions. He's a great communicator, great talker. Um, a guy that plays with tremendous energy. I know that offensively things will come to him, start to come to him. I just want him out there playing free um, and then defensively having that intent uh, to really lock in and help us get stops. Through uh, two games, we've seen eight guys that seems to be your rotation right now. Uh, is that, do you envision that staying the same or are you pushing someone like a Noyes or a Demarion to maybe get into that ninth spot? Yeah, I mean, those guys are right there. Um, last game, obviously, we played them tonight. Felt like it was important to let guys get in a little better rhythm. It could change night to night. Um, really, that's earned on the practice court. I don't really have a set mindset on if we play eight, if we play nine, if we play ten. Um, I just want to know that you know when we when we put guys in that they're going to be focused on playing to the standard. And so um, I'm open minded. Demarion's had some great you know moments and games for us. Noyes has showed us. Um, right away what he can do. So we'll continue to give those guys opportunities, Ooh, excuse me, <coughs> as they earn them. TJ, there's always so many moving parts in the offseason now with college basketball guys coming in, guys leaving. Uh, the chemistry so far through two games, what have you liked about what you've seen, even though it's still early on in the season? Yeah, I think it was better today. You know, game one, I just think we're still working, you know, having everybody healthy, getting them out there, getting that rhythm. Um, I think guys are starting to realize what we can do and, and what they can do and what they can bring. Um, as we continue to, to have better ball movement and player movement, I think that'll open up the court more. We have a lot of scoring options out there. Um, I mean, very easily we could probably have six guys that approach double figure scoring. So we just got to get the best shot for our team every possession down and keep the ball in the move. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.